a springtime ring to have a friend right in your corner your heart will feel a little warmer tender loving Good evening, I'm Dr. Greenbrier Almond, and thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Each week for the past 35 years, we've been talking about issues of tender loving care, and I don't know that I've ever had a more important topic tonight than what Ron and I are going to talk about. Uh, and we're talking about end times and knowing the times and trusting God through difficult times and and uh, a very, very important lesson that we began to hold just a few weeks ago at the Pentecost Sing uh, that the Methodists have uh, every year uh, down in Holly River. And, uh, and uh, God brought us together there uh, at a picnic, and, and uh, this is an extension of that conversation. So thank you for coming on. I'm glad to be here. You, uh, you're a man of your word. You said you would. and. Uh, nice. You're a good teacher. I understand you substitute teach in the I was end times teacher and church. I'm now a substitute teacher. It's in the End Times Ministry Church right. is just here up the road from the studio. That's right. Uh, where uh, the uh, Stony Run and Route 20 intersect. Right. Okay. And so, folks, if you're interested in, after we talk and you want more from Ron, and, and uh, then uh, this is just wetting the whistle. So, uh, you are. Um, You've done a lot. You're a retired military. Uh, I honor that, respect that, because uh, my own involvement with veterans uh, for really most of my medical career now. And, of course, my father's role in World War II. I remember uh, hearing many stories of his eight years in service. That was a long war. It was. And uh, and then he served in the occupation of Japan. So so, um, I salute you for that, too. But uh, tell, tell us a little bit about this. Uh, there's um, signs of the times. There's uh, Bible verses uh, that, that we should be studying, lifting up, trying to understand at this time. Well, a lot of people, like I said, they don't, they don't want to study the book of Revelation. And they say, I, it's too scary to do it. Mm-hmm. But when you actually get back to studying, prophecy about the end time starts all the way with the book of Genesis and things. And you slowly pick up those things. And if you ever look at a lot of references, a lot of your things in Revelation will go all the way back. It's basically the two big the, the one or the three big ones, actually, is Ezekiel, Daniel, and Isaiah. That's one of the three okay. big ones that really pertain to the tie-in. Plus, I've also found in my reading the Bible, everything that's in the Old Testament and New Testament, if you read the four Gospels and hear what Jesus said, mm-hmm. he tells everything the same to compliment. You say, well, I believe what Jesus said. Well, if you believe what he says, then you right. believe what the, the Old Testament says and what the, the rest of the people, especially with with Paul and the letters that he wrote and, that and deals he, with the end he, time. He, he fulfilled all the... Uh, Old Testament prophecies for his own right. life in this first time he came. That's right. And he talked a lot about the second coming. That's right. Yeah. And of course, you know, they say people, well, there, there, there's things like say when you study it, there's some people, there's three beliefs out there. There is a belief that says that uh, the church will leave first, and then because there's a second belief that we will be here for three and a half years. And then, of course, the third belief is that the Christians will be here for the whole seven years. Well, you read what Paul said, and mm-hmm. he said that the uh, restrainer, which is the Holy Spirit, will be taken out, mm-hmm. and that's when all this stuff will start. Well, the right. common sense thing, our body is a temple of that Holy Spirit. Right. So if he's on that, and, your, and all your references talked about the end of the ages, that is the, when the church is taken out. Mm-hmm. And that is, to me, so is, early on. That, is, that marks the start yeah. of the seven trier. When the rapture takes place, mm-hmm. Your seven years is peacefully started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense to me. Uh, and I've always taught this as a medical doctor. I will say, 
uh, to people who, who need to maintain their body's health and vitality, eat right, rest, exercise, you know, the basics. And, and, I, and I remind them, I say, uh, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Right. And, uh, and the, um, it makes sense. That's what Jesus said. It, I need to go away because I'm going to leave this comforter uh, right. and this, this, uh, this wisdom behind. And it will be not just for a small group of people in uh, Israel, but it will be for Christians right. everywhere. Those who didn't even know Jesus face-to-face, the, -face, they still have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, don't they? Yeah, it's interesting some of the things that actually, you know, where you're talking about voices and things. Mm -hmm. If you look in the book of, um, of Acts, you hear there were the blind lights. And in a certain way, it talks here. It makes you know the impression not that everybody heard Jesus' voice. Mm -hmm. But then you get in, verse, in chapter 22 of Acts, and you find out that's his testimony. They seen the light, but they did not hold, hear the voice. So they mm -hmm. knew he was the only one that knew what was said. And that's the same way with people like you and I. We can hear God's voice. We know exactly what he's saying. Mm -hmm. But the people around us don't know what's said no. because everything it's a personal thing and it's his way of working things. Right. So. Yeah, we if, if if you walk with God and, and that's what you do every day, right? I mean you walk with God. I walk with God. Uh, the uh, you you get you get a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but all of it's comforting, all of it's uh, ties together in a nice right. way. Uh, I, I I liken it to the for for the theme of our show, the interface between right. Christianity and medicine, uh, where where the where the rubber hits the road, uh, that's where God is, and He's directing us if we will listen. Right, and, and also you know you you know this in the fact of being a, a doctor, that Christians heal faster than others, and I also I was healed when I was a teenager, okay. so I was sick, so I know from the fact people say, well, I felt a warm feeling and thing. I didn't. I felt my body changing, and it was mm. a scary experience. But immediately, I was no doubt in my mind that I wow. was healed, and I have never had that any problem with that sickness. Is anymore. that right? Well, that's amazing. Yeah, you know, I spent two years uh, with the Oral Roberts Ministries, and of course, he was healed of tuberculosis, which right. is a very scary disease, spitting up blood, and and he uh, and he was healed of that, and that was miraculous. It changed his life, and. Uh, he liked to say this, a miracle settles the question. Right. I mean, you know, we, there's no doubt there's a God when there's a miracle, is there? Also, the one thing I never thought to tell you before, that I have the Will Roberts Bible. It was given to my dad. I mean, of course, my dad, in turn, when he passed away, it was mm. given to me. So uh -huh. I got all his commentaries and all wow. the things that he said. So you work with him, and I've got the Bible yeah. and things, so we both get to see right. exactly right. how he felt and what Well, he was a good was teacher, like. and... Uh, uh, interesting uh, be, from our standpoint as an American uh, part Cherokee right I mean that, that's interesting because there's uh, we we don't uh, remember our heritage like we should as a nation True. well tell us about the end times here I mean what do, what do we need to be looking for uh, watching for uh, uh, that you see happening uh, in the horizon. You mentioned Isaiah. That was one of my mother's favorite right. books in the Bible. Well, as I say, we saw it in Sunday school. It talked about in that day, which there's only six verses in there, mm -hmm. but it talked about how God, well, we could have faith and we could trust God to take through anything it is. Mm -hmm. Well, that trusting thing is going to take the Christians out, but then it converts back into Israel. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the whole world's coming. Even people in the United States says we shouldn't be doing anything for Israel, which we should, as the, as the mm -hmm. Bible tells you. Uh, those who help Israel will be blessed. Yes. Yeah. Those who go against them will be cursed. Right. And I, and I hear people who want to wiggle out of that by saying, well, they don't mean the government of Israel. They mean the biblical nation of Israel. But but it's hard to not include what we see right in front of us today. I mean, right. a, a nation with boundaries, with so many millions of people. Half right. of all the Jewish people, I think, are in Israel now. I think about half of them are in the United States right now. Right. So and we're you all know, tied so together. There's another group right now that's being released from Africa to go back. Mm -hmm. So they, yeah. God said this is something he's going to be. He'll right. call all the, the Jewish people out of the world to come back mm -hmm. there, you know. Yeah. It's, it's going to happen there. Yeah. 
So we're, we're coming, uh, there are signs then that this is happening. The nation of Israel is one of those signs right. uh, of, of the close of the age. Right. That's that thing. And like you said, the focus then also, if you read also in 11.5 of uh, Romans, okay. and it tells you there where God blinded the Jewish people so that the Gentiles would have a chance. Mm-hmm. And which we took on the job of going to the world because the Jewish people, they wanted God to themselves and things, in which we can't. Mm-hmm. That's the same way with our experience with God. You can't keep that experience yourself and I say, God bless me and only me mm-hmm. because it has to reach out to everybody else. And that way, my faith and your faith. You know, Paul told us, comfort each other with the facts of what's mm-hmm. going to happen in the end times and things. Right. Thing. So we're going to need close fellowship and things. I don't think we've seen it, all the persecution, but you see a lot of it coming from the government. I've read a few articles now where the IRS is starting to persecute churches as well. Mm-hmm. And, of course, like you say, if, if a person who had been a teacher ready to retire and all of a sudden is taking that job is taken away from him, you know, that's, yeah. that's, a person has to have awful strong faith to mm-hmm. say, I, well, I, I can go through with that. But there, is, there are so many little things that I know that it's coming that we can't imagine right now. Right, right. We, we, we think in terms of, of blessing of material blessing, right. and and that's part of it, but really that's not even uh, what what Jesus was describing. It, he was saying, "Don't worry about your food. Don't worry about your clothing. Right. And look at the lilies of the field, and look at the flowers and the birds of the air. You know, and and God takes care of them. So so uh, the material part that some people say I'm being blessed because I have material wealth, right. uh, that that could be taken away." Well, you look right at look at another verse or in, in chapter in the Bible. It's Matthew twenty five. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are talking about there where he's saying that people help the people in jail. You fed and clothes and all this, mm-hmm. and he said you. And as much as you've done it to them, you've done it to me. Right. Well, a lot of people say, well, we in the United States don't have to worry about this because mm-hmm. we have welfare and all the church programs and things. But they don't realize after he said that is when he said. I have come back to set up my millennial kingdom, and therefore I will separate the goats from the sheep, mm-hmm. which I look at it as the goats being the Gentiles, mm-hmm. the Jews being the, and the, the, as his, his people, you know, the sheep. Mm-hmm. And people say, well, we're the church the thing. Well, we understand the church is already out, so there's no need yeah. to, to say that we as Christians, because we are inherited in with the Jews. The Bible tells mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. that we're an inherit with them. Yeah by accepting him as a savior and saying. Right, right. Do you think, Ron, it's a mistake then? I mean, churches are uh, sometimes uh, saying, let's just uh, be closing in upon ourselves. Let's have our worship services and great singing, and and we'll read the Bible and we'll praise God inside the structure of the church, but they're not being good neighbors or they're not reaching out to, to the well, world? Well, I think a big thing I see in churches, because, you know, like I say, I get around quite, and I've been going around to quite a few mm-hmm. revivals and things and helping out. Right. You're, you're a musician. People, you're not singing tonight, but, yeah. but people should hear you, Ron, sing sometime. And they will if they watch this station very long, won't they? Right. But anyhow, like I say, people, uh, they... Uh, they feel to go to church for one thing. A lot of people, especially you notice this in revivals. All right, they'll have special singers in. Mm-hmm. Well, the fit group that does the service one night, you'll see a lot of the church come with them. The next night, they're not there, so therefore those people are not there. Hmm. And, and so the result, many of the, the revivals you're having are people <clears throat> coming from outside, and the main core of the people that should be there promoting the revival are not even showing up for it. Hmm. So that okay. shows you the thing. And the Bible says there'll be a great fallen away. Mm-hmm. That shows you right there. And, and another thing I've always noticed, it's not in all churches, but let's say with 80% or more, mm-hmm. you go in churches, you see nothing but old people in there. That's you true. don't see your teenagers and young. That's there true. are a few of them that have kids and things bring with them. And if we die off, then the numbers can decrease. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen to the church once we're gone? There's right. nothing to replace us. I had a hard time, and I, I, I beginning in 2001, I, I began to have this burden for children. Right. I mean, and I've continued to take care of children. I now serve on the Board of Education. I'm in an elected position, but it came out of this idea of helping children. True. And uh, but, but I saw a change when I began to work with children 
that <coughs> I could not tell them Bible stories. True. They, I, I was talking about Noah and, and the rainbows, and, and they didn't understand it. They had never right. heard the story. And, and, and it amazed me because these were, I thought that I was making uh, points that they True. would understand. Uh, they were liter- illiterate right. uh, for Bible knowledge and it, it, because they had not been in Sunday school. They had not been in vacation Bible school. Certainly their parents had not taught them, uh, maybe the grandparents uh, in a few cases. But uh, we, we, we are uh, always just one generation away from being heathen. True. And, and maybe we are there now. <laughs> Although they say he, he's got in his plans to take care of sin, and that's the whole thing. That's right. All things are happening, and when this is finished, right. we'll... So are we getting a second chance now, then? I mean, you come back to this end times theme, that especially the church that you worship in. Uh, I mean, you, you, you study this more than most people. Um, uh, besides the nation of Israel being formed in 1948, right. but... but are, are we getting a, a reprieve now of, uh, of where we can have revival and have a conversion, or, or are we getting to the close of that age? No, I, I believe the, the potential for good revival. There's some of my churches I go to that are having a strong spiritual revival uh-huh. thing. You, you, you get out of the entertainment thing. You get out okay. of thinking— uh, as a is is a business person, you mm-hmm. know, you look at it this way. These are the things I have to do. <clears throat> you don't look at it this way, and I've said this many times in in working and in teaching. It's not how many people I bring into a church. Okay. If right. I bring a hundred people into a church and we have good attendance mm-hmm. on their records and everybody's mind, they say, "Well, we've done everything right." Yeah. But God isn't going to ask you that in His judgment time. He's going to say, "How many did you get in church?" How many of them did you help convert to my, my faith? Mm-hmm. And that's the point of it is if you can't win souls, right? Then the numbers mean nothing, you know. That's right. Right. It's not the numbers that are worshiping. They may be there because there's, I'm making this up, but free clothes given away at the end of the service or something like that. They may right. be there for any other reason except uh, interest in God and and what God would have. God has a will for each of our lives, and and what is that will? I'm just like a, I, I read an advertisement here when a man was looking for a church that has a baseball team. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's good. When when I was with, working with young people there, we had congregations where we got together like that, and we had parties, we had playing, we sleigh ride and all this thing. But we didn't do it as a thing to say that's what you have to do. Mm-hmm. It's the fact is, is Christians have to learn to get right. together and and. Even though we've done these things, after we've done it all, we still had time for singing and right. we had prayer service and things so, so that the people could feel the power of God. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's a, the worshiping is a spirit that's come from God right. that's doing the work and being mindful to what he asks mm-hmm. you to do is, right. is the secret I'll, of all I'll this. I'll give you an illustration, and I, I, really, I, I love the Filipino people. I mean, I'm right. married to a wonderful wife, uh, now 38 years this year, and uh, we went to a, a church well, not even a church picnic, but it was a, a Filipino picnic right. this past weekend. It happened to be on a Sunday. Uh, so we gathered, but before we would eat, I mean, we gathered at 1130, but before we would eat, we had church. Right. Uh, and we didn't eat till after one o'clock. <laughs> and no one, was, no one was pressing us to close the church part down and, and get on with the food part. Dude. I mean, this was just the heart of about 300 Filipinos coming together and they wanted to honor God, and they wanted to be collectively together, and and then they were willing to eat. But uh, and they ate. They know how to eat. But uh, but anyway, that I that's that just to echo what you're saying. Uh, when people go to church and they have activities, right. uh, that's not the main point. Uh, True. The church is something else. This is worship. The, the soul, winning of the soul, has to be very important. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, like to say, you need to fellowship together. Right. Right. And then, and it's just the spirit pulls it out from one to another, because you can, it ain't better in the church and a minister give a real strong sermon mm-hmm. and then have the altar call. Mm-hmm. If he has done everything in the spirit and the people in the church are Christians and the mm-hmm. spirit filled, you can feel that spirit and things. Yeah. I, I remember one service I did in revival, which is uh, they tell you know to bow your head, close your eyes, mm-hmm. and then they give the invitation to to the elder. I felt on me like I had a hundred pound weight something put on my head, mm-hmm. and I wondered why. What 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 is this going on? 
And all of a sudden, that burden just lifted off of me. Hmm. I looked up, and here was a woman at the altar. Yeah. She yeah. went there, and she gave her heart to God. Right. That was it. We, right. we feel the joy, the same as it says. The angels rejoice when their mm-hmm. soul is one. Mm-hmm. Well, we can feel that same rejoicing ourselves, yeah. and that's what makes services insane right. when you see something right. like it's done. You know, uh, I'll, I'll go back. We started off talking about Oral Roberts ministry and, and uh, two years I spent there. Uh, the doctors uh, would and nurses would be praying for patients to come to the City of Faith. We wanted to teach medical students to be missionary doctors, and, and that was our, our purpose. That was our mission. Uh, and so, of course, we needed patients. And these were mainly the 300,000 people that supported the Oral Roberts ministry. They would, uh, they would come to Tulsa right. and get their medical care. However, this is interesting, God's working. We had a hard time keeping people in the hospital. I mean, they would come to Tulsa. They would be very sick, heart failure, uh, you know, cancer, what, all sorts of things that are horrible sicknesses. Uh, and there would be revivals going on all the time at the Maybe Center, right. which is a big basketball arena uh, on campus, about 18,000 seats. And, um, and the, the patients would say, can I not go over with a nurse or attendant and, and go to that service? Mm-hmm. And we'd say, well, sure, you know, but we'll, we have to, if you get too sick, you have to come back across the street, you know, and go mm-hmm. come back to the hospital. Don't, don't tire yourself out. And so anyway, we would give them medical pass. Mm-hmm. They would go over and get prayed for and get healed. Right. <laughs> they come back, and the next morning, doctor, I, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> we finish off our test, and in fact, uh, they, they were well. And, and uh, it, was a, it was a marvelous way of God's economy, right. I mean, in a sense. Now, it, the, 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 eventually the medical school and the hospital had to close, uh, but, but God was still active and quick and... and uh, Prayers were being that, answered. That, that will continue that way until. Oh yes, that until, will. We didn't, until we didn't, the rapture takes place right, and we're out of here. Right. I, I learned one lesson out of that. I mean, I, I the hospitals were booming all over America at that point, and I said, well, "How can this health system be in trouble?" But I tell you the truth, we're in trouble today. The healthcare I, system. They say that there are more people sick and things. It is yeah. because yeah. And you get into the point where God talks about the famines and the pestilence. And mm-hmm. a lot of people don't understand that word pestilence right. and things. But yeah. we're seeing it converted out in all the new diseases. There's right. possibly, they said, never. Every year, it seems like the news brings on the nip for sickness sure. and things that they can't deal with. This is things. just an example. When I was in medical school, the, the common sexually transmitted diseases were gonorrhea and syphilis. Right. I think there's 37 or 38 right. sexually transmitted diseases, all of them as deadly as gonorrhea and syphilis, of course, including AIDS. Right. But 37 or 38, these, these things are multiplying. So this is something you get to see firsthand in things in, in uh, your work. In oh, things. I know. I fight against disease and death all the time. Right. Well, tell us more about, not about me here. This is about you and, and, and not you alone, but, but uh, for uh, folks who are watching, uh, to understand... Uh, some signs, uh, some concerns about why there is an end times ministry in our community. And well, let me uh, briefly get back over the okay, starting the thing. Sure. I had a dream. This all started out with a dream. God was speaking to me in this dream. He spoke to me out of thunder. You know? mm-hmm. and, and yet, the, as the thunder rolling, the words that he said were just as audible as you and I talking. Okay. That was my first little experience. The second thing I had was I got to see a man in a white gown lift off the earth go up to where the clouds are, <clears throat> which was a low cloud. Mm-hmm. Just like a double door open up, that body disappears through it and closed. Mm-hmm. And then from that, you know, where he, he started speaking to me, and then he started giving me a dream, which I've had six of these dreams. Okay. All right, out there where I live, there's an old railroad grave going through there. So it's a There's enough room you can make a big lake there. Mm-hmm. All right. The first dream, the water was over the banks. It has never been over the banks. And each time, it keeps getting higher and higher. Hmm. And the water doesn't come down the flow. It always comes off the hill behind me, which is the east. Hmm. The last time, I looked out my bedroom window, and I could see about that much space between the window and the top of there. dream. Which tells me, he's telling this, you know, according, that's his way of saying, I will not tell nobody. Nobody knows when it is. Mm -hmm. But... Like Jesus said, we can know when it's right. The end right. time is right at the door. That's and right. That's what that's He's right. showing us, and that's what He's saying. And and He's told me, and it spoke to me. I want you to testify to these mm-hmm. things. Tell me your experiences. Warn people. Then if right. they don't, you know, like the, He told Ezekiel in there, if you don't warn the people, 
their blood will be on your hands. Mm -hmm. But if you warn, then the blood's not on your hands. It's the right. burning you, cell. You, you have you've counseled them, and, and it's up to them to decide. If you are uh, wanting to study more about this, Ron teaches uh, at the End Times Ministry on Stony Run and uh, Route 20 South, uh, right here in Tenerton, uh, on Sunday morning. Right. Uh, what time? It starts 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, and then on Wednesday evening. We also have good preaching things. We have various you know, ministers come in. We've got two good ministers there, and and uh, we have other people that's, uh, that come other ministers to come mm -hmm. in and speak for us. And so it's a very a very spiritual. We're very well mindful of the fact of, of going about God's work and, mm -hmm. and warning the people and things. But the main thing is some people will come listen and they'll leave because they they don't want to hear these things. They, right, right. They're going to say, I, I'm enjoying life. Why should I take time mm -hmm. to this thing? It ain't going to happen in my lifetime. But, sure. And that's the big mistake that people are making. It's of course, going to I, I have that time. in medicine. Uh, people will say, well, I feel bad. Something's wrong with me, but I'm not going to go to the doctor to get the diagnosis because that's going to be bad right. too. So they just want to uh, be in denial that anything's right. happening. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you have... Uh, since you were on the last time, uh, several years ago, right. uh, you have recently married again, and nice. we should we should say uh, hi to your lovely bride. And uh, and uh, so life life uh, continues. You lost a wife through death, and, right. and uh, she lost her husband through death, and and now you have uh, marriage. What is that? April this year? Right, April the thirteenth. April thirteenth. Well, uh, bless you both. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, what else uh, should we say? We have a minute or two in closing just to uh, talk about, uh, we want to make some points here about, about uh, signs well, once, and times. Well, one thing is we worked up the thing. Uh, and we realized as it had come out, oh, Will Roberts brought to the house in his book. Mm -hmm. When the rapture takes place, then as Jesus said and he told him there, I came in my Father's name, and you receive me not. There will okay. be another one come after me who will come in his name, and him you will accept. So the poison, the person, whoever it is, the, the people of Israel was going to like that person. Mm -hmm. And he will in turn help them build a temple because, you know, they have rejected Jesus as Messiah because mm -hmm. he died on the cross. That right. means they're going to go back to the old-style thing of making sacrifices and things. Mm -hmm. And so you see we're all going to go back, so... Uh, th this thing starting over. God's going to start out a new series with them, which is going to bring him on. You know, like uh, I've also believed that a lot of people say, well, what two witnesses will come back in that time? Mm -hmm. I believe it'd be Enoch and Elijah because both of them never died. They left here alive. Okay, yeah. And, and that's why a lot of people says Moses and Elijah, but I say it'll be Enoch mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Elijah. I think the vision that Jesus had was Moses and Elijah, wasn't it? Uh, the transfiguration. Uh, yeah, the transfiguration. That, that, but they were both there at that time. Right. They may, people that may get that confused right. uh, that's, with, that's with what you're saying. saying. Right. So Enoch and Elijah. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the Elijah, I mean, uh, just to close with a, a story, because uh, this was part of our church service the other day, uh, Elijah uh, calling, uh, going up against the Baal, Priest. Right. And there was a hundred of them, I think. A large, 500, 500, 500, right. 500, 500, a large number. And and and, uh, and the question was, who can light the fire? Who right. can light uh, the sacrificial fire? They couldn't fire? down far, but Elijah did. <laughs> yeah, he did. And it was an amazing miracle. Right. Well, thank you very much, Ron, for coming on. Uh, and uh, you will want to study uh, either the sources that Ron's talking about or if you're inclined, uh, please uh, know that the doors are open. Uh, End Time Ministry uh, at, in Tenerton, Route 20 South, right where Stony Run intersects. And uh, you'll not be disappointed. Uh, I think this is, uh, all of us need to be curious about what's happening. Right. Uh, and, and these are, um, there are a lot of questions about what's happening in the news, a lot of questions about uh, uh, what's happening uh to America, uh, to our economy. I mean, uh, but the only way we can really understand it is the broadest perspective that there is, and the Bible provides that outline. Right, that's right. So thank you very much. Thank you. Until the next time, this is Dr. Greenbrier Allman thanking you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Special thanks to Channel 12, or Channel 3. <laughs> I don't want to give credit for Channel 12, do I? Channel 3 for the opportunity to come your way each week. We'll see you next week. 
Stories of a West Virginia Doctor, written by Dr. Harold D. Allman. A collection of 55 short stories about his experience as a small-town doctor in central West Virginia. And Tender Loving Care, Stories from a West Virginia Doctor, Volume 2, written by Dr. Greenbrier Allman, using videotapes to write 70 additional stories of his father's very colorful life as a small-town doctor. They can be found for purchase at Amazon.com and most local bookstores. Tune into Channel 3 Buckhannon for Tender Loving Care with Dr. Greenbrier Allman, where he talks about the connection between Christianity and medicine.